like what we call are we are we considered bush mechanics what is a bush mechanic and what is <laughs> not a bush mechanic <laughs> What's up guys and welcome back to the Z Gear podcast. Uh, I know it's been a minute, but uh, yeah, we're back. And today we are featuring the boys who I think need no introduction to the guys in motorsport. But seeing as this podcast is bigger than just us Zambians who know each other, uh, I'll let you guys in on who these guys are. We've got Tio on that side and we've got JB here. These are the guys from Ilile Auto. I'm sure you guys have seen some of the content that we share on uh, Facebook from their platform. And obviously, if you haven't already followed them, go ahead and uh, follow them. But yeah, today we've got these guys here. Welcome, guys, to the podcast. Thank you, Patrick. Hey, awesome. Awesome to have you guys on the podcast. Uh, it's, 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 it's easy to interview people who are not friends. But then you bring your friends on and it's a yo, bit yo. yeah <laughs> a bit uncomfortable but yeah let's see what we can do here uh so basically today we're going to be talking about um mechanics you know being mechanics because you guys this is this is what you do for a living and obviously there's you know a lot of um you know questions around that stuff that people would like to know and that's basically what we uh we want to cover today so i think you know for me Growing up, I actually wanted to be a mechanic, you know, because uh, most, for the most part, I love cars initially. Then Fast and Furious came out, and then there are those my cut scenes that we would see where Dominic Toretto does this, you know, uh, what's his name, Brian O'Connor pours the oil, and then I'm like, I want to be a mechanic. Yes, <laughs> I want to be a mechanic when I grow up. There is a point where most of us wanted to be a mechanic. Yeah. When the two J came into the scene and you opened the the bonnet. And uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I realized like a couple of years later. Yeah. That's an engine. It was an engine. It was not even a GTE. Wow. With a wire, of course. Serious. Hey, you see, I didn't even know any of those details, but I think for me that's where I thought you know I wanted to be a mechanic. But I don't know for for you guys, like what what is it like, you know, c- because that's what I think being a mechanic is. And I think a lot of us, because we watch stuff on YouTube, we see how these Americans do it in their fancy workshops and what. But what is it like, you know, from the content that we watch to the reality, which is what you guys actually, you know, go through? Like, what is it like being a mechanic here in Zambia? Is it glorified or, you know, as fancy as it is? Or is it at different levels? Two sides to that coin. <laughs> it could be all you've ever dreamed of. Yeah. And it could be a worst nightmare. Mm, mm. Something as simple as what, bro? Changing oil. Yeah. You can change into a cruise drain plug in an oh, aluminum yeah. sun. <laughs> yeah. Then you have to take <laughs> it to, to a machine shop. Mm. I would say it's an experience. <clears throat> yeah. We've got, we've got like a lot of a lot of youth out there that are aspiring mechanics yeah or those that have studied mechanics but mm. mechanics is one of those professions in zambia that a lot of people are actually taking part in mm. yeah okay so so maybe let's let's go back to where you guys started from because i've i've shared like kind of what i thought you know i wanted to be and Obviously, that changed. Now I just make videos for you guys uh, here on YouTube and Facebook. <laughs> but yeah, like for you guys, what you know, what brought you to this point where this is this is what you do, you know? Where we decided to be mechanic. Yes, yes. Personally, was it me, always? Yeah, it's always been there because of my dad. Mm, was your dad a mechanic? No. Okay. <laughs> he thinks he is, but uh, <laughs> dad's not a mechanic. <laughs> Um, yeah. But he taught me most of what I know, the basic stuff about cars. Yeah. Uh, growing up in the 90s, I can say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, growing up in the 90s, my dad used to import and sell cars. Okay. So weekends, when he's not doing that, we'll be fixing cars together. Mm-hmm. And I'll follow him everywhere he goes. Mm-hmm. Break stuff, he'll get a bit upset, but learning curve. And yeah. then. I started seeing cars with exhausts, you know, like 
late nineties. <laughs> why is that car sounding like that? No, that car has two pipes. Yeah. Why does it have two pipes? Then the usual. That car goes up to two forty. Wow. Yeah, you know, like a, it's faster than that car, but I didn't understand the thing, so mm. I wanted to know more. Yeah. And I said destroying things in the house. Like my dad had in the house yeah. so now it was no longer about the cars you no, were no, no, it was about everything. the cars growing yeah. up on a farm there was a section of the house attached to the garage uh, that no, we used to use for spares yeah so my dad used to have buses so there were spare fuel pumps those yeah. diesel pumps mm-hmm. injector pumps fuel rails the whole shebang when no one's home and no one's watching, I would go and tie those things that are perfectly well, bro. Like, and it's not to assemble it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, once you open anything to do with fuel, the whole house will smell of fuel. Yeah. yeah. And then, before you know it, he's there shouting at you, you damaged something, that's what it's <laughs> So, slowly, I would get to know, after I damaged it, I would know, like, oh, that's what this is worth. Mm-hmm. But back then, it was just basic mechanics, like, your regular fixing. Yeah. There. Okay. And then when I was in ninth grade, that's where stuff started becoming real. Mm-hmm. I've got a brother, cousin, uncle, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. His name is Guy that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chiza. He had the cookers, like even when I was young. You know, my dad would be more chilled, no loud exhaust. He had loud exhaust on the cars. <laughs> yeah. Would cry for him to pick us up from school, you know. Mm-hmm. Like that cool one. And then he started slowly teaching me things here there. Weekends would build an engine together. Mm-hmm. And that's how everything just fell into place, man. Okay. So my dad wouldn't object because he knows yeah, in, yeah, in good hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so. Okay. So all the way until you finish school, you, you've just been doing that. Until I finish school, <coughs> I started driving when I was seven. Mm-hmm. That's, when you, <laughs> that's when I started driving. Seven years old. Wow. <laughs> Li- living on a farm. <laughs> yeah. Then, living on a farm. Um, when no one's home, I knew where the keys were. So, <laughs> See, and get you, the car. J- yeah. JV, where, yeah, where, you, where are you coming from? You know, coming, get, getting to um, this stage, being a mechanic. Mm. So, Steve, me, me, my mm. story is. Did you also start, start at seven? seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at seven, I was doing, I was doing other things. Yeah, okay. <laughs> My interests at that time were different, mm. but the whole mechanics thing right, <coughs> for me came about yeah. the time when I like started project cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the V8 man. Yeah, right ah, okay. the time when I bought my first soldier. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's the time when but this I, is your second soldier. Mm-mm. This is like my fourth. 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 Oh, okay. Fourth. <laughs> yeah. How come I never saw the other ones, man? I've always known you as the Tesla the uh, sliding guy. Yeah, that, that's our flag car. Yeah. yeah. Flagship car. Okay. Mm. So, like, right around the time I got my first soldier mm-hmm. is, is when I, like, got into mechanics because at that point I wanted to build um, a, a project I had at Cresta. I still have. Uh-huh. So, the plan was I was going to remove the one using from the soldier and put it in the Cresta. Oh, ah, okay. Plan. So I needed to do that myself, okay. as opposed to paying somebody to do it. So I, I, I started, you know, looking up into things of how to undo things, which things have to be undone a certain way, mm-hmm. and then yeah, slowly but surely, you know, you build on your knowledge as you yes. keep attempting different tasks. Mm-hmm. Where are you? Where are you picking <coughs> that stuff up from? YouTube. Yeah, like like most people, I actually started my mechanics career from like youtube okay um, yeah so but 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 uh, this is the thing because i'm also a youtube no, you are the mechanic. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> maybe the youtube mechanic at this point uh how does it um how, how does it play on for lack of a better term your confidence uh you know knowing that you didn't study you know mechanics uh how does it play on your confidence when when clients bring cars I'll tell you one thing. Do you do you freak out about certain cars? I know there are certain cars that we delay yeah. like your regular person mode. Yeah. Not this nigga man. Mm-hmm. This was just yeah, like, <laughs> so for me I look at yeah. it I look at it like okay, earlier he had mentioned that he, he used to take things apart in the house. Yes. I also used to do that. Like I, I, I go about looking at these things as a logical, you know, somebody put this together following some logical guidelines, yeah, guidelines which, yeah. Which so you obviously, 
to undo this thing, there's obviously a, like a reverse of, mm. of those guidelines. You just yes. need to go backwards. backwards. Yeah. Okay. So I look at every car in that particular way. Like even if you've never worked on the engine, you you first start undoing the thing that is in front of you mm-hmm. to get to where you want to go, and anything that's in the way to get you there, you have to undo it. Yes, but right. obviously you have to look at it in a logical manner because there are some things that you don't necessarily need to undo because mm-hmm. you can get through another way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Along the way, you need to watch out for those signs. Okay. Otherwise, you end up removing a whole subframe when the objective yes. of the job is <laughs> you're just supposed to get a control amount. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, it, it's like an endless rabbit hole if you keep just undying everything that you see mm-hmm. so yeah okay so i mean do, but does does the school play much of an important part yeah to guys so, like you who as far as i am concerned you've managed pretty much without it at this point yeah yeah school does play like a huge role mm-hmm. in, in in everything like yeah. you know you can you can learn business on the street but if you did go to school and understand yeah. the principles behind business and all the small rules and and mm-hmm. um things that concern your the different people you're going to be involved in business with yeah. you know it, it helps you mm-hmm. going forward okay. but not taking away from the person that hasn't gone to school to learn that those guys yes. will probably learn that through another experience, yeah, yes. through experience. Mm-hmm. that's how they learn it so it's the same for us in this whole field of ours like mm-hmm. you know yes we can go to school it will probably be better mechanics but at the end of the day it all comes down to experience the one yeah. that has tackled more cars will know what to do yeah. better than the person that has the theory yes yes and, and actual no experience mm-hmm. yeah yeah no that makes that makes a lot of sense i mean i was I was trying to think about um, you know the the difference between like what we call are we are we considered bush mechanics? Yeah, what is a bush mechanic and what is okay, so not a bush mechanic? <laughs> a bit because, of detail. Mm-hmm. I went to school for this. Okay. Yeah. You did. But I'll tell you one thing. Three quarters. This of is what after grade twelve. After grade twelve. Yeah. Okay. Three quarters of what I know mm-hmm. about this class is not from school. Mm-hmm. It's from YouTube. So look, what you learn, what you learn at school in, I'll give an example of myself in 2014, 2015, yeah. Yeah. What you learn in mechanics at school around that period is not what you find in the real world with modern cars. You find we were going left to do this, now we're going right to do this. You know, mm-hmm. That type of thing. I'll give you a very simple example. Um, Mr. Break it, Brendan Racing. He was building a trouble for himself uh, last week or the other week. Mm-hmm. Turbos have a way of untying the wheel. It's opposite from the regular untying. Oh, okay. So it's, it's made like that. So at the direction it spins in, it locks that, itself up. Oh, okay, yes, it does. But the turbo you're untying was regular. Mm. They've oh. changed on certain turbos now, as of today. You have to untie the regular way. So you were tying, yeah. thinking you were. <laughs> no. And he was and it there. Broke. He was there with his head just there. Then they're trying to untie, but no, he figured it out. <coughs> yeah. Mm. So yeah, school does play a vital role, mm-hmm. but the best is experience. Yeah. And for us, what made it easier, I'll, by us, I'll speak for the the ghost here, JB myself. <laughs> we were not scared to experiment on our own cars. No, I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we we'll tear something apart, and dude, like. Trust me, there's a lot you guys don't see, and we'll be like, oh, <laughs> so you do that, like, this breaks, eh? Yeah. And we'll be there, like, yeah, it's broken. Mm. We'll be back. Let's try and fix it back again. Back to the drawing boards. Yeah. We we'll always look for a way of making it better. Mm. Yeah, you know, the easiest thing to do when you're a mechanic is cut corners, bro. <laughs> it's cut corners. <laughs> it's the fastest and easiest thing to do, but it's the <laughs> longest burden you have on your car. Yeah, when you cut corners. The things yeah. that will start coming at you after that, my God. Uh, really but I mean, the, the environment here in Zambia, does it really allow for, for like, you know, no cutting corners? Because I think like a lot of yes. people like to do, you know, we, cheap we jobs. We just don't have patience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It yeah. allows. Every we just don't have patience. Right way to do it. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, if you, if you take that away and decide to do a job based on the fact that you want to either do it quickly or the mm. client hasn't paid enough money for me to be bothered to do it the right way you know 
you 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 are yes you are basically setting yourself up for failure mm. because that job I'm, will probably come, come back. back to you yeah to still come back to you yeah. there's no job that's more irritating than a return yeah than a return job because you're not getting yeah. paid yeah. oh yes you've already been paid mm. so it's yeah. time that you're burning so yeah well give us so an example mm. Uh, my M50, you've been finding me building for long. <laughs> Man, <it's right. laughs> Do you know what happened? Uh, the threads in the head are cruised. Only two or three. Oh, yeah. Honestly speaking, we can get away with it. Like the cow run. But the day we decide to go ham, you end up breaking a camshaft, which will lead yeah. to dropping a valve. Then before you know it, we are looking for more. And so, exactly. Yeah, so it's better to just do it the right yeah. way the first time. No, it's good. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, the another thing that I think we can try and touch on is, you know, like we, from your experience, which cars uh, have been some of the most difficult to work on? Like, what has been, what was your toughest, your, like your first, you know, toughest car to work on? And you, which one, which one was, you know, the first car that was like, you know, those cars that have you sitting looking at the sky <laughs> for like five minutes. Like why isn't this working? <laughs> like say, yeah. That that former orange now black car of mine. Yes. Ask this old. The roads that put everything together, bro. Like mm. why even like yeah, fire it up. Yeah. That would start. The car had spark. The car had fuel. Well, but it definitely had spark and fuel because it would explode. Bro. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. Loud bang. Every after five cranks, we'll just be like, BOOM! <laughs> you know what? This fuel! That's, that's when they know what this fuel is fucking And you know, yeah, they're like, why won't it start? And the car was running fine the previous day. So, yeah. Uh, honestly speaking, I can't count them. Yeah. My own cars, all of them have done that to me. Even the champ. The champ reached the point where we were cranking it the whole time. Was this before you messed with it or after you messed with it? I have been messing with that guy. It's, <laughs> it's all like right. Because as if the like champ was pretty reliable and, you know, consistent yeah, before. It's been. Yeah. It still is, actually. Yeah, right. Yeah, it still <laughs> is. We threw three gearboxes now, too. Five, bro. Five boxes. Five wow. boxes. It's a box graveyard, that kind. Oh, wow. It's a box graveyard. But yeah, like the champ would give us hell, like it was running mm. and it just dies. Would call there's a famous character among us, right mm. now, a friend of ours, Don. He'll come in how many minutes? Don't take time. Don't take probably time. like five minutes, ten minutes. Is really yeah. The car is running. Mm. And we'll be there the whole day cranking it. Trying, trying, try try and he'll come. Mm. So when you put attention to the signs, this car is always give you signs, man. Right? But then there's me, bro. It's giving you the sign, just putting volume in the radio. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If like you can't hear it, it's not an issue. You know, yeah. Before you know it, you've damaged quite a lot of stuff. Mm. So that's that's usually what digs my grave on my cars. Yeah. But, but I'm working on it now. Um, this is 2024. Working towards being a better person. Um, my boy can vouch for that. Mm. The world and gift hasn't just been I can tell by listening. Yeah. yeah. You know how? Yeah. Mechanic. <laughs> Mechanic. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. I think for me the the first car to give me a hell. <coughs> okay. Okay. Even the, like the the BMW 335. Quite mm-hmm. the first time I looked at it, it was hard, but it was it was manageable because at that point, um, I was going through the whole work with uh, instructions from. Mm-hmm. Mr. Bended Racing, mm-hmm. so it wasn't that bad. But the car that you know, even he just stood aside and let me do everything alone was an Audi. An Audi. <laughs> an Audi <laughs> uh-huh. That was the worst. I was dropping yeah. the gearbox on that thing. Ish. That was a nightmare. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't wish that hey, bro, on anybody. Don't forget the uh, moment. How so the, the what people say? What people say about German cars? Is it is it true or? Or not? What do are they? Re- are, people say that they are one problematic, like in general, hard to work on, problematic in terms of things just go wrong, and this is obviously compared to what Zambia drives, which is Toyota. You get what I mean? So is that is that true to say that German cars are difficult, or is it the clients that are? <laughs> I would say that type of understanding would probably make you say that, mm. like as a mechanic. 
lack of understanding as a mechanic. Lack of the vehicle. Itself. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. like for example, BMWs. BMWs are considered to be problematic, like mm-hmm. in terms of oil leaks, uh, overheating. Yeah. Uh, yes. And you know, I don't know, maybe randomly popping up codes. Yes. You drive a 325. <laughs> so most BMWs. Like, you find all these things have got like areas where the issue is coming from. Mm-hmm. If you don't attend to that situation, the car will just start, you know, randomly just misbehaving. Mm-hmm. You know, you know so they BMWs don't particularly. For the, I don't know. I don't know if I can call that plastic. I don't even know what they use, but it's not plastic. That mm-hmm. stuff, it's brittle. Like it breaks, it breaks. Really easily. Oh it yes, yes. It's leaking, and then the car just starts randomly overheating. Mm-hmm. And it's not a an unknown thing that BMWs actually like they run hotter than most cars. Mm. Like the cooling system it's is designed to be at optimum temperature to be near 100 degrees, you know, that's that's mm. like really hot. So, you know, when you add, yeah. Yeah, when you mm. add the climate we have here, you know, it's, it's a recipe for disaster if you've got a, a little pipe mm. that's really Yeah, it's you know, okay. Well, that that pipe is going to give up. Mm. Yeah, things like that. So, uh, I think it's like, you know, you know, they need to understand that, you know, the car you're driving is demanding, mm-hmm. you see, and then, you know, Sometimes the thing that can seem very small that maybe you might say, no, let's just put silicon on it, you know. Yeah, on a BMW maybe that just buy doesn't the, yes. buy the pipe, you know what I mean? <laughs> buy yeah. the pipe and put it in, don't yeah. just put silicon there. I think the most accurate uh, statement I've ever heard was the one that says, don't buy a BMW with a Toyota mentality. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think Toyota make, lets us get away with a lot of things. Yeah, they do. You right? can silicon this. Yeah, you can... Yeah, you can uh, zip tie this. But mm, over but the long run, in all honesty, if you put the right amount of money into a BMW, mm-hmm. with genuine parts, like yeah. let's say OEM parts, not aftermarket, <clears throat> and you put the same OEM parts in a Toyota, yeah. the, the German European vehicles actually last longer mm-hmm. because the quality of their stuff until you get to the bit of plastics, yes. so forth, but everything else is okay. pretty much good. And as far as far as um, the quality of parts is, is there is there a lot more like fake um, low quality parts available for German brands or you know Toyotas have more Japanese have more fake though. Mm. There's too much. Is that, does that affect the price? Because I've always wondered why German like control arms for it, little way a, a whole suspension for a Toyota. Mm-hmm. For example, my Ranix, I can rebuild the whole suspension, I think, in less than 7k? With your legs under the car. Hmm? With your legs yes, under my legs under the car, in that <laughs> famous <laughs> picture. Right. Uh-huh. I can rebuild the suspension with that. And I, maybe not even just the Ranix, but most Toyotas, you know? So why is that with German, with German cars? It's a control arm. Same control arm does pretty much the same thing as far as I'm concerned on a German car as it does on a Toyota. But the price but difference would be... It's more complex. If you had to put them so side the German by side, car? yeah, mm-hmm. the German cars are... It, it could have been straight mm-hmm. to make it a C. Yeah, you do the, Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what contributes to... <laughs> but it pays off in the honey. I'll give it that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, these days, most German cars come with aluminium control arms. So, you know. Oh, so the Toyota ones who have the steel, yeah. or oh, you can press fit stuff. Yep, press fit yes. things there and then you're done. But the German one comes with the whole aluminium control. Oh, which you can't press fit because it would no. damage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so there's nothing like changing a bushing. No. And the, thing, the way we do our Toyota, you just have to get the whole. Yeah, the whole arm. The whole arm. Okay, so it's, it's more of like a design, a design thing, yeah. that makes the price uh, expensive. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, when, when, when it comes to, to, to brands also, you know, that you guys have worked on, which one would you, would you advise clients to stay away from? Which yeah, from Audi. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't say that. I okay. Say that. <laughs> stay away from Audis. I agree. Any other problematic... Uh, I agree. Problematic stay away from Audis. Mm. Um, if your pocket is shallow, yeah. Like you don't have to spend. You might have a deep pocket, but you don't. You find spending on your own car necessary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Stay away from German cars. If you're that guy, stay away. Mm, the guy who likes to cut corners. I'm telling you, stay. If you're that guy, get the the cheap oil. Stay. Away. Yeah, like the moment you cross into like the German area, like there's no. Room yeah, unforgiving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's no room for shortcuts. Shortcuts are very, 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 very. 
paid for an expansion. On a German car, you go to fly, bro. Bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. It won't work. I'm not saying you did it. I'm, I'm just saying. It won't work. You know, we managed to weld the flywheel onto our blue 350Z and that didn't go well. Oh, wow. That's so I can nice. imagine on a German car, it probably, it probably be worse. Yeah. yeah. So um, the, another thing that I wanted to, to find out from you guys is um, as far as women uh, or, or maybe, let me just say clients anyway in general mm. what makes a what makes a, a bad client and what makes a good one good client mm-hmm. as, 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 maybe i should explain why i started off with women mm-hmm. there's this uh notion that lady driven yes lady driven like that's lady driven cars that's, you know and okay. also the fact that women come in as people who don't really know much do they make some of the worst <laughs> the worst clients not to contradict myself, mm. but lady-driven cars, sometimes you get away with it being clean, and sometimes you get away with it being a wire that looks nice outside. Mm. But you follow up on the history of the car, yeah. something else. So, I've had the fair share of understanding female clients, mm. who if you tell, I'd say, in 5,000 cases, bring the car back for service, you even put the reminder, in every, it will be there, 4,800 to be back mm-hmm. like then there's those who say oh i've done eight thousand k's and nothing has broken <laughs> and just <laughs> let me just keep going you know? as long as it starts <laughs> exactly those that's that's the worst thing you can do for a car mm-hmm. the more you know prevention is better cure mm-hmm. the more you know your service intervals mm-hmm. you did a video on um cloud systems mm-hmm. gunk cloud oh systems, yes, 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 yes 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 that's where that comes from mm-hmm. that's where all that stuff comes from it yeah. starts from there so i think it would be best to just follow your service intervals mm. and what makes a good client yeah a client who understands the car they put that's what makes a good client for me mm. if let's say the two of us i buy a bmw he buys a bmw i don't understand the bmw he does we're not mechanics mm-hmm. we take it to a mechanic he understands that the car was misfiring it might not just be the plugs, it might be an injector, it might be a coil. Yeah. Be. Then there's me who's just come from your regular Toyota Japanese car, mm-hmm. which when it misfires, not even one with coils, it's the HD that has cut. <laughs> That's a five minute job. Just yeah. pull out the HD, put it on. Mm-hmm. I would expect the car to be out in, in an hour max. Mm-hmm. If I go with that mentality into another type of car, like a European vehicle, mm-hmm. and then start putting pressure on the mechanic, no, why is it taking you long? Quite frankly speaking, I've had some of those clients where, you know, I sell spark plugs. Yes. I sell the client spark plugs. Two days later, the car overheats. Then what do they say? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the plugs you sold me! Bro, I made my car overheat. I made my car overheat. Like, how? Oh. Where is the relation? Oh. No, yeah. where is the relation? Ever since oh, yeah. I changed plugs, I changed my fuel pump has died. Ah. Fuel pump. You know, all those things like, no, no, bro, you know, first, things, like, no, no, bro first, understand your car. Mm. Understand your car. You know, mm. I'll give you another, another example. example. Most, Most cars um, are living on their last leg, whereby if you change one side of the component mm-hmm. to a new one, the weak one will give out next. Yes. And then the client, you tell them to buy left and right, they just buy left. You fit the left. You even tell them you should have bought both. They come back two days later saying the noise has come back. And then you check the noises from the other side. Explain that to the client. <laughs> no, you didn't change. Yeah. No, you just. And before you know it, you've got a bad rep. Mm. So I think it's also important to understand your clients before you commit to your clients. To the job, yeah. Yeah. yeah so speaking on that point, mm. what makes a good client? Good clients are the ones that pay. Mm. Pay what makes a bad client? <laughs> a bad clients do not pay. Uh, Even if they do drive an M3. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. What do I mean by this? Like, um, so, uh, good clients are those that understand that, you know, even if the job takes two minutes, even if the job takes five hours or two days mm-hmm. or one month or two seconds, you know, um, the car has been fixed, you know. Um, so, the bill is the bill. Yeah. You know, you it needs to be paid. Plan, you understand that it needs to be paid. And they'll, they'll own up on their end and pay the bill. Because, mm-hmm. you know, 
it doesn't matter whether it's taking me two seconds to fix your car you know yeah. the experience that i have to know exactly mm-hmm. where to touch to yeah. fix it you know that that counts for something yeah, yeah. Okay. so you know then you have your on the other side you've got your bike clients that you know want to talk about you know yourselves <laughs> and yeah, a lot of the money that you're charging is too much or yeah. you know my car already had this issue i sorted it out the other oh, guys sort it out for cheaper. Yeah, they Take it to the other guy. guy mm. Sort it out for cheaper, mm. you know, and things like that. And then you go on like debating on, and you know, I actually go on like chasing after your money, mm. even mm. after the job has been done. The, the saddest part money. about what he said yeah. is three quarters of those clients are on your friend list. That your boys, yeah. your house, people who know you. It's always the people who know you will take advantage. Yeah, true. Patrick, you want spaces. I'm saving spaces for 800 quarters. Mm-hmm. You offer me 650. <laughs> but you will walk into a shop, another shop, for someone you don't know, and find the same spaces for one five. You will buy them there. Yeah, sure. But because it's still saving them. Ah, it's you know. Yeah. So, no, no. Those are the bad times. Yeah, they want to pay for. Service. For service, yeah. And like, um, <coughs> I have a situation where somebody wanted help with their vehicle, and they had a previous balance with me, like they owed me money for a previous job. Mm. And I was like, okay, cool, no problem. I can sort out your vehicle, but then you know we need to square off what the previous balance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and and they couldn't do that, and opted yeah. to just you know let me just take the car to somebody else. Mm, and yeah the car was taken to somebody else and yeah it was fixed and all that but you know i still haven't gotten paid mm. so i i don't know what they are thinking yeah but you know, <laughs> this is I a bad you know okay so so uh, it's it's for me. The, I, I'm, I'm a, a, a photographer, photographer, you know, a videographer by profession. profession. So, so when, we, when we talk about, yeah, uh, yes, yes, now slash YouTube mechanic. <laughs> So when you talk about, about you know, know people, people not paying, paying for a service, service people, people criticizing you for your price and stuff like that, I can definitely, definitely relate. You know, it's, it's one of the the most uh, frustrating thing because our our industries are not really formalized. You know what I mean? They're not really formalized, and at, at the end of the day, day even the money that we talk about, about even if I was to say I want, I want to take this up with the police and what, I end up spending more, more, or, or, or you, you know, pretty much whatever, whatever I'm trying, trying to get, get, you know, trying, trying to, to solve that issue. issue. So, so definitely, that that, that those, those can be like you know some of the some of the worst the worst clients that you can have. But for Ilile as a brand, where do you guys you know see? the Lille brand, you know, being in the future, like what's, what's the, the ultimate, ultimate um, you know, uh, goal, goal for you guys? Is it, is it to have like the biggest workshop that everybody knows at every, you know, single corner? Is it to be, you know, the guys known for the best modifications or, you know, what is the goal? What is sort of, yeah. The goal is to be the guys known for helping other guys get their cars on the road mm-hmm. and putting motorsport out there. Yeah. You know, Three quarters of the people who are getting onto the scene who are rushing to buy a car they don't understand. Mm. And it's what they want the car to do is way out of the car's <laughs> league. Because, because you've heard of the famous bug mm. You go buy an X2Z Z yeah. money. And you want to do what the 350 is doing. How? Could a Rymix not drift it? <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Just because somewhere you might have seen a Ranex doing some hundred tens or something. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, if we can get people to understand their cars, mm. it's cheaper on us. You know, we wouldn't be doing so many projects if we just bought the right car. Yeah. You know that, right? Mm. So, as opposed to buying this, let's see what your options are. Yeah. So, we do take your choice seriously but sometimes your choice is not the best so for what you want so as a brand yes we would obviously want to be a very big workshop with more than an outtaser to show because that's how we have that's how we no 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 don't even say a champ ah it's down the, the champ spends its time looking for clutches and gearboxes bro the outtaser never spends its time down so that's all we have to show for it but uh, there's more to come, and uh, we really want to see more people understanding their cars. 
I'll give you an example of the same autism. Three quarters of the people think that guy has got some other engine three years away. Some people even said use it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you tell them, no, it's a 1G. And they're like, ah, the 1G couldn't do that. Yes, you're doing it wrong. Like, you sold off your 1G to get something else that can't even do the same thing the 1G is doing. Mm-hmm. Mainly, the ignorance in the motorsport scene is what slows us down at the same time. If more people understood what they have, the cars they have, I think yeah. we would make better results. So, mm. as a brand, we would like to see ourselves um, growing in many things yeah. other than just kidding. Uh, <laughs> would like to teach people certain things. Yeah. On the, know, on the part of on the part of teaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, By certain things, I mean on their own car. Yes. It doesn't make sense for you to come in the morning and say my car is failing to start. I drive 15 k's, come to your car, and tell you, oh, your battery is drained. <laughs> like no, 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 like really, does that make sense? Yeah, and we, we have people like that in the motorsport industry. Yeah. No, but but Kondani will call you for something, for something like that straight. Yeah. No, Kondani is not a. It's not a petrol. Everyone knows Tio. No, that's true. Tio never picks up calls. Tio never picks up calls. A man, a man needs to be known for something. But what I was, <laughs> but I'm, what, for what I was, what I'm was, not was, proud of it. I'm working on it. What I was trying to touch on when it comes to to information, I always, I always wondered why. why like a lot of a lot of you mechanics don't do like these same you know like videos that i do i'm not even good at like half the time i'm making mistakes and i'm sure you guys pick that stuff out. thanks for pointing yes. that out i'm sure you guys pick that stuff out whoever is watching this video but <laughs> make sure make sure this part is not cut out but no, by but yes. <laughs> but the reason no i'll slow you down the reason we don't do those videos is uh-huh. when we're working on a car guys your hands are full three quarters of the time yes how many phones have we got trying to get videos? The broken phones yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to get videos. Mm. That's why we reach out to people like you. Mm. So, Patrick, we've got a build coming up. We need you on board. Mm. But then Patrick will be too busy putting his legs under the annex, which is yes. <laughs> he, he, Patrick, Patrick would rather document himself trying to commit suicide wow. under the annex with his legs under the car than us professionally putting an engine together. Oh my and then you show up after the engine is done. Say, oh, no, oh. look. In a team, in a team, it's all about figuring out who does what best. So you see, like at Z here, there are two next. I'm just the video guy. I don't touch spanners or do anything. You get what I mean? So I'm sure here, yeah, even, even if you said, even if you said, even if you said, oh, today we are putting together this engine. Taps is the one on the camera. He's just filming. The dedicated camera. That's, That's what, what I, mean. I mean. But then but the, the, but the, the, the question, question that I got from, I mean, the answer that I got from another mechanic was, you can't share your trade secrets. But, but for me, what, what I've noticed is, all of us, bro, are literally YouTube mechanics. Yeah. Like, like everybody's putting, putting information out there. But in Zambia, Zambia it's, it's like, like people want to. Zambia, yeah, you know? Like everything is already out there. Yeah, because because I what I've seen, my 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 channel has been running for maybe I think six months or something. Bro, people call from South Africa, they send messages from Uganda, whatever it is, yeah. you know. And the, the thing is, the, the person who told me that they wouldn't share because of trade tickets and stuff like that, is like, no, you don't want people to go and start opening another garage. And I'm like, <laughs> look, at it, look at it this way. Look at it this way. Hey. Like, um, even when you get sick, yeah. um, you do go to the hospital, like, to get attended to yeah. by a doctor, you know. But then, you know, your doctor is not out there saying that you cannot, you know, trade secrets. Mm. I won't yeah. tell you which medicine. I won't tell you which medicine to take. Or yes. He's not out there telling you that stuff. Yeah. Because even for him, it's a business. Like, you need to come back for him to make money. Mm-hmm. So he's not out there either making you sick on purpose so that you come back or he's not yeah. keeping stuff from you so that you can not figure it out and mm. still come back to him. Yeah. But the information is out there. Like even if he doesn't tell you, the information is out there. You can find information. But most doctors will tell you because mm. you know you're gonna come back. Like yeah. getting sick is the thing. <laughs> everybody gets sick. So it's the same thing even in cars. Even if everybody knows what's what, people will still need their car to be worked on. Yes. People will still come, mm. even if some others didn't. Others will come. Yeah. So no, I mean I've, I've seen, seen I've seen like, like you guys. Have, put out your content but i just wanted to 
sort of reinforce <laughs> the importance of that, you know, because I've seen, I've seen the, the benefits, you know, of just like, talk about simple things, fuel pump. Why is the fuel, what happens if the fuel pump doesn't work? You know, so whatever, whatever it is you guys are working on, uh, as you go, like you are sharing with us the build, the, ref- the refresh on the, um, on socks car mm-hmm. you know stuff, stuff like that that's, that's super, super interesting, interesting stuff so, so i know that the day that i want to refresh the loot where am i going Ilili. Sure. You know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's you see <laughs> that's because i know that you guys are putting that stuff out there yeah, yeah. yeah so, so i think, I think it's, it's a it's a really um you know important uh, part you know the content creation is, is the thing these days you know three quarters of the people out there who say you don't share trade secrets yeah. statistics will tell you Three quarters of the people who watch those videos don't even own cars to fix with the same information yeah. and knowledge. Yes. Most people are watching it for the fun of it. Yeah. Most people are watching it to gain basic knowledge over how this works, how that works. So I think some of these things we just bring ourselves down, we slow ourselves down. Because the same YouTube people we watch, and they're putting it all out there. You know, there's, there's certain videos where you'll be watching a YouTube video. And he gets to the end of it and then he goes, oh yeah, so the mistake I made was, I didn't tie this before tying this, so I have to take this all apart and tie this, then come back to it. And you're like, he actually put that out there. He could have left it and yeah, let you go there. Let and you and do whatever, yeah. So, do three quarters of the time when we go through the car, we, we can't get it right. Google, YouTube, we yeah. find what we're looking for there. If those people didn't put it out there, yeah. where would we be? So, I think sharing information comes in handy. There are people who obviously won't want to tell you certain details of their cars. Thank you. <laughs> um, there are people who won't tell you details yeah. of their cars. Um, no, no names mentioned. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just it's a big, a big company that way. Certain trade secrets. Secret. 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 So, um, but at the end of the day, I'll speak for Duncan. Mm-hmm. On your car, if you have a problem, he will help you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he will tell you what you need to do. Yeah, he's he's Duncan. He's got his own reasons, but yeah. <laughs> you never see his bonnet open. Mm. You don't know if there's a, a use that or a it in that car. Yeah. You, you, you don't know. But, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Hush Hush. Then you've got a lot of portraits. Um, I'll put it out there. I have issues with my cars. Um, mostly my M- 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 M50s. Mm-hmm. I have issues with those dude I reach out to a lot of patriots and they tell you the issue like that like real yeah, simple, simple quick they even say oh where are you all right I'm coming now come help you mm-hmm. I'll come help you go through everything you know yeah many times people have had issues with um BMs one G's or mm-hmm. we'll laugh, laugh at the issue with JB like it's a simple thing but we will show up pull up help you out sort it out yeah. so the knowledge I think, I think it's it's it's, it's a, a plus, plus for everyone if it's put out there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, it's a plus. Cool. What are some, some last words you guys would you know want to put out there for young people who want to get into this mechanics thing? I know my nephew uh, the other day told me he would love to be a mechanic when he grows up. <laughs> what you know? What are some words of encouragement, some advice for a young Zambian upcoming mechanic? Cheaper. I'm just joking. What? 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 No. Okay, okay. listen. Let's <laughs> we'll edit that out. I don't know if the video will get pulled down <laughs> because he said. Cuts in. Just leave it out. Leave it out. Yeah. Um, do it. Mm. Yeah. It won't be easy though, but yeah. do it. Me and him have this thing of. Except let's do this. Okay. What's needed? R and D. Me, him, and him, the ghost, the one who's always late. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll do R and D. The most important part is in R and D. If you don't do your research and you just jump into it blindly, yeah, it will be costly because you find the things you've omitted are the things that will keep the things going. You know, so research is very important. But at the end of the day, of the day, do it. I mean, it feels nice when you do it. You know? Now, I've triple charged two any cars of my own, of my own, bro. They break, but hey, it feels nice. Mm-hmm. Those, that, that achievement, that feeling of I did it. Yeah. Yeah, that feels good. If you saw 
the Arteza in its original form. Like, we still have the videos, dude, and you see it now. It's a totally different car. Why? Because he went out. He said, okay, I'll do it. Got everything for the car. Like, did you meet me? I, I used to cut corners, like say, me, my things, I'll do half of it, let it sit for the next six months to the other half. JB got everything for the car. Everything. Powered it up. So, so much, much that the build was, the car was running in, in, in no time, it, it yeah. backed as an automatic, came back as a manual, like no issues, everything working. Yeah, we did that car was running in the afternoon, <clears throat> so gather everything you need, put it together. Um, there is a lot of don't do it, some, some of them are benefiting to you not to do them mm -hmm. some of them you won't know if you try you know you won't know if you try yeah, I mean, you won't know if you, if you don't, don't try, try sorry no if you don't no. try yeah. i think i would say maybe like attention to detail like you know most if important. you do not if you do not have that skill you need to you need to find it mm -hmm. and like every day improve it because the more attentive you are to the things you're doing the easier the work gets mm -hmm. yeah like it's it's, it's 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 almost like the way i remove engines in 35s like i can do that in like 20 minutes the engine is out yeah swap whatever i need to swap in another 20 minutes the engine is back in the car the car is running by the end of the day the client has the car mm -hmm. you know because i i already know what things need to be untied and what steps you know yeah. so i would urge a lot of young people like to be very attentive to detail always have a plan before you do something like you know you need to measure twice cut, cut once, once. Mm -hmm. that of a thing mm -hmm. so you, you always need to make sure that whatever you're, you're you're trying to achieve you have already planned it out you, you dotted all the eyes mm -hmm. you know and uh, things are making sense then you can now actually start spending money because yeah. you don't want a situation where you spent money and then it hasn't worked out and then you now have to correct that thing by spending more money. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you keep doing that enough, you get to a point where you're just frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> it's not I, feel, sense. I feel advised by your advice. Yeah. Because today, <laughs> today I actually bought a fuel pump I didn't need because I didn't... Uh, what, what's that thing you said? Cut twice? <laughs> measure, 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 measure twice, twice cut, cut once. once. If I did that, I wouldn't have wasted 500 in a fuel pump. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, yeah. a lot of these things can be solved just by being either A, attentive to detail, mm -hmm. and two, planning. Because yeah. even in, in this field for mechanics, there's a lot of misdiagnosis. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of mechanics tend to diagnose uh, <laughs> the symptoms and not the actual problem that the guy is facing. So, uh, you know, and as you are the client, you, you know, the mechanic will be telling, no, you need to buy this. You go and, and you keep buying. You on the car, nothing, nothing happens. Then they'll tell you, no, you need to buy this other thing. You buy that, nothing happens. You know, and it, it ends up being a, a rabbit hole that, you know, you, once you go so far into it, mm -hmm. you know, even you as the client, you're just like, this car, I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah. not worth it anymore. And not really that the car is problematic, but yes. because yeah. the person is not paying attention to not detail. Attention to detail. So Had you seen the crack on the radiator on the loot? Bro, wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? I think it's attention. now time to end this <laughs> one. You, if you pay attention, right? yeah. mean, if our brother didn't just, just have that Lexus, mm. that car would be running smooth right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, you know, it's, it's small, small things, things that we know. No, is it? Is it? Is it that though? Man, he, 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 say, he thought he was in fire. If, 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 if he just felt. The spring in, in the, the in the shifter. shifter. Thank you. Oh, yeah. no, thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you. In yeah, the you, right place, you, know. you would have known, bro. You would have known. But Spawn would have known. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Non nonetheless, uh, mm. we appreciate <laughs> him for making an M50 wow. drive yet. Now you want so, to talk. Yeah, because we have visited your gearbox failure. <laughs> <laughs> if that car wasn't on, if that car was still on the road, mm. I would not be driving a 380. Wow! Oh. <laughs> it was a blessing in disguise. Blessing. So, are we selling that car now? Which one? The, the, the battery, battery profile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll rather see it burn. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, mm. uh -huh. before you go, um, so. 
one would you advise people to have like a mechanical speed dial or should we all just occasionally like look at the youtube video and mm-hmm. at least start learning that, 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 that goes, goes both, both ways, ways. <laughs> um always have a mechanical speed dial yeah. and look at the youtube video at the same time <coughs> when you call a mechanic and say the guy is doing like i'll give an example of your earnings if the terminal is loose just go, crack, crack. Mm-hmm. i'll tell you yeah. Just uh, watch your YouTube video, Google, battery position, terminal location, and I'll tell you how does this thing look. Press it down, tight, the cup start. Mm-hmm. But for more complicated things, three quarters of the people I know, mechanics inclusive, petrol is inclusive, shock inclusive, when they hear knock, they say it will go away in the morning. A friend of mine, uh, Zay, shock, the list is endless. Mm. Um, when I hear knock, I don't like myself. I say, ah, god damn. <laughs> oh, sorry. I say, oh, yeah. Mm. I've heard Sok on many occasions say, except in the morning, it will go. And in the morning, it's louder. Mm. You know? Sometimes you really can't diagnose it. Like, you can't hear it. But when you hear certain things on the car that sound out of your league, call your mechanic. Please do not do yourself diagnosis. You end yeah. up spending more. more. Yeah. So... Um, so both, both are important. Both, both are important. Both, both, are, both are, are important. Like uh, I would, I would encourage everybody. You know, you know, you spend money to buy these cars. Yeah. You know, it's, it's your vehicle. It's your asset. So you need to actually take time to understand how this thing operates. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. Like if you have to watch YouTube videos about your car, they are there. Mm-hmm. You know, just search about your car, you will find everything. Even mm-hmm. the most common issues that are. A plague by it and all that stuff you find all that on youtube or on google mm-hmm. but i would I encourage everybody to take interest in your vehicle because it's your vehicle you pay for it and then you know you drive it mm-hmm. you drive it and and you know working on your own car sometimes allows you to have a better understanding of how the car is performing so also, also improves, improves your vocabulary your yeah <laughs> <laughs> now you explain things you about get it these yeah. things quickly mm-hmm. even before they actually get worse because you know that uh, this noise i've never heard it before yeah, you know, um, then yes, you should have your ma- a trusted mechanic on speed dial. Yeah. You know, only one mechanic needs to work on your car. I would not advise you to have more than one mechanic because you know, another person uh, does I things to pay the mechanic, <laughs> <laughs> another person does things in a different way. Yeah. And, you know, the other guy has to come and either a start fixing that guy's things that he did for him before he can even start doing the work. Yeah, so it's easier if you just work with the same person and you know. And avoid leaving dates with your mechanic, which will make you go to another mechanic when you have another problem because you can't go back. Because <laughs> you can't go back yeah, to your so kind of avoid mechanic. leaving dates. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, for one, always uh, make sure that my clients understand what the job is that I'm doing and how I resolve the issue. Mm-hmm. They need to know that so that mm-hmm. next time something of the sort happens i don't need to show up for you don't need to show up yeah. just call me and i will tell you what to touch yeah, for yeah. your car to be okay yeah, so i make that like an emphasis you know mm-hmm. understand your vehicle yeah okay. okay and then the second Thank one you. was um <coughs> what what are some simple things that people can do to um help run the cars better or help them not spoil their cars or some something in those lines most, most importantly, important. at least make it a habit to check your oil. Yeah, that's that's, that's the, usually the lead to a lot of dead engines. Yeah. you know the oil will tell you a lot. It will tell you it's dirty. It to tell you there's shavings. It to tell you it's slow. Mm-hmm. So for me, the most important thing on a car is your oil and your coolant. For your regular people who don't know much, develop an interest in monitoring. Your oil levels, your coolant levels, and don't just start your car on a cold morning in July and put it in drive and go. No, no. <laughs> start the car, let it stabilize, warm up, you know. Fuel. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> they complain <laughs> about fuel, but you know, I've seen people say, Why is the car running? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just observe your car. You know, sometimes while the car is running, warming up, it will tell you a lot. Some cars, right here, if you've got one of those misfires that comes and goes. When, when you start, start the car in the morning, it will pop up like after some seconds. Mm-hmm. You hear the the idle change to blip. Mm-hmm. You know something's not right. And please check your coolant and your oil. Mm-hmm. Break fluid too. Fluids run the car. 
Yeah. Your oil will determine how long your engine will last. Yeah. Your oil in partnership with your coolant. Yeah. Your breath fluid will determine whether you stop or you, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the, the thing I can tell everybody out there is, you know, the people that design these vehicles and um, put these things in your engine base, they did not put the dipstick for me to check your oil. That's it's actually for you. The <laughs> <laughs> dipstick is there for you to check your oil. All, all the dipstick. The, the, yeah. the bottles and all those levels mm. and things that are there, they're all for you to check your own. Level. Me, if I want to check your oil level, I'm going to undo the drain plug. <laughs> See how many liters yeah, come out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but for you, who's you know not a mechanic, they actually put that little thing there for you to you know see max and minimum. Yeah. As basic as you can have it, so that you can understand what's happening with your vehicle. So yeah. yes, like my friend over here said, you need to take time and check your fluids. You know, check your brake parts. Um, Check your tail lights mm. in Zambia. You know, People neglect that a lot. Like for real. Check that all your lights are working. Yeah. Take time to check your vehicle. Because if you take that little time to check your vehicle, you are helping the next person who's going to be following you behind to know that like, okay, this guy, you know, their car is fit to be on the road. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you, you, you could be a person that just causes an accident. Mm. Over simple things. Over simple things. Yeah. yeah. Just simply because you didn't buy five like, quarters of kill light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. All right. Cool, cool, cool. No, guys, I think we've got uh, everything out of the way. Thank you so much for being with us here on the podcast. It has been Tio and JB from Ilile Auto. And obviously, the podcast is also brought to you by Auto Select, where we buy, sell, and import vehicles. So if you want to buy, sell, or import your vehicle, definitely look up Auto Select. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep the topics running like this, guys. There's different topics that get you guys to have information about motorsport. You know, we've we'll talked with the mechanics today. Who knows what we're going to be talking about uh, next. You guys can drop a comment. We're very active in the comment section. And uh, obviously, you can leave a like and follow Z Gear and also leave a like and follow Elile Auto as well. Yeah. yeah, you guys have stickers. We still have Maybe stickers. Do... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can call. These guys have stickers. I've got, I've got the Elile sticker on my car. You need one. Everybody needs to get an Elile sticker. It yeah, adds, it adds 50 HP. Car becomes stable. And then the Z Gear sticker adds another 50, another 50 300 horsepower. And did you know? <laughs> By, by driving, driving with, with the Elias sticker, sticker on your car. Yeah. Just yeah. by the virtue of you driving with the Elias sticker on your car. Fuel consumption drops. Goes down. And you need he that. Needs. It's now 3347. I'm telling you, you need, <laughs> need that. You need that. You need a sticker. So guys, grab yourselves a sticker, a gear sticker, a Elias sticker. And yeah, we'll just continue having a good time. But uh, until the next one, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Cheers. Take care. Life's safe.